Thank you. I'm Jeff Moore, and I'm going to talk about puzzle thinking today. I'm going to start by telling you an interesting story. About 10 years ago, a good friend of mine came to me with a couple of problems he wanted help with. Now, this is a very, very accomplished guy. He was nationally prominent as a cellist when he was a child. He went to Harvard, then Harvard Medical School, and became a doctor, but he never practiced medicine. Instead, he went into uh, management consulting and then venture capital, then raised $40 million to start a healthcare company. He ran that company for seven years, and after seven years, the investors fired him. So the first problem he wanted help with was, what am I going to do now? How am I going to make money? How am I going to take care of my family? What, what, I'm lost. Uh, more significant than that, he was profoundly unhappy. He was about 40 years old at the time, and he told me there were four fleeting moments of happiness he'd had in his 40 years of life. And he wanted to completely change that around. So we use what I'm about to share with you today as a method, as a means of breaking down these problems and, and making progress on them. And he had some spectacularly great results. The one that took longer was the, the happiness. That took years. But now he is completely connected to reality, uh, really a joy to be around and take, kicking the juice out of life. And he's devoted the rest of his life to helping people make that same kind of transformation using his personal experience, his business knowledge, and his medical knowledge. On the other front, we use this method to uh, decide what business he should be in, decide who should help him with the business, and decide what his role in the business would be. And then he started a business, and it took us about three months to develop what the business would be. And then after that, he started the business with two, three other partners and a million dollars, and then he operated the business. 18 months later, he sold that business for $90 million in cash. And so that I consider that a successful outcome. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, what was this about? Well, how do we do this? This is the process that, that uh, I'm calling puzzle thinking. And it's just a way of, of thinking about problems differently and transforming them. The reason I do puzzle thinking is because I'm a puzzle person. I've solved over 100,000 puzzles in my life, including five or six today. And <laughs> yeah. And I apply that thinking when I'm helping my clients reason through things and, and solve problems. Now, the reason this is important is because the, the mind is kind of a machine that's designed to create certainty. And as you're in a stressful situation, the more certain you are, and we're trying to develop flexibility. So a puzzle, for the purposes of my discussion, I'm going to call a puzzle something that is a voluntary challenge that has defined rules, a clear goal, and it's low stakes. So you might be doing it for fun, to learn, et cetera. And a problem, by the other hand, is the opposite of all those things. It's, it's an imposed challenge that probably doesn't have defined rules or a clear goal and maybe high stakes. So I'm going to submit to you that if we could figure out a way to turn that problem into a puzzle by moving those needle all the way back to the voluntary, uh, low stakes, and defined rules, then we can make it a better progress with our minds on it. So when I'm doing, so puzzle thinking is really what I'm doing when I'm solving a crossword puzzle or a Sudoku or something like that. And there are three components to it that are quite important. First one is knowledge. So if I'm doing a crossword puzzle, I have to understand English and I have to understand how to spell and so on. And then we have reasoning. And in a crossword puzzle, I need to say, well, the cross and down together imply that this has to be this kind of word and so on. So that's the reasoning level. And the third one is flexibility. You cannot get locked into just one way of looking at the world. And that's the thing that your brain is chemically designed to do, so we have to break that loose. And that's really the challenge. That's really what we're going to spend most of our time on, because you guys are pretty good at knowledge and reasoning already, and it's easy to get better and better at that. It's very difficult to get better and better at flexibility. So that's ultimately what we're doing to get puzzle thinking and to use that for innovation for other purposes. OK. So on the macro level, there's three things I want to share with you. First of all is writing. Write things down because it frees up space in your mind. Write and draw so that instead of this, your mind occupying the problem, you're, you have space in your mind once you write it. Second thing is involve others. That's going to be very easy to help you lower the stakes because it's by definition lower stakes for them. Right? And then th third is continue to lower your stakes in other ways by changing your role in the situation. OK, now I'm going to give you an exact step-by-step -step recipe in a moment. Before that, I'll give you an overview of once you've got the problem into a puzzle and now you're working through it, there's a four-step process that's based on George Polya's book, How to Solve It. He's a mathematician from Princeton. He published it in 1945. I studied it when I was getting my undergraduate degree. And 
even though he's a mathematician, the method applies to any kind of problem. So there's four steps. The first step is C. Second is plan, then do, then check. C, plan, do, check, and we're going to just overview the method, and then we'll go a little bit deeper in a minute. In the C phase, you're just about defining the problem. So you will be asked to write down, draw it, ask any questions, and just kind of own the problem without trying to solve it. When we move to the next phase, we want to generate ideas without judgment, as many ideas as possible, especially bad ideas. And when we're done with that phase, we move to the next phase, which is a do. And in do, we now want to eliminate bad ideas, combine ideas, prioritize, go deep, learn. And then check, you finally want to take the conclusions you've got, compare them to the C step, and you know, am I on the right track or not? You can always backtrack. So the method, to, if you now have a problem, if you're now in this space of fear, space of innovation, space of tech, here's your, your algorithm. First is change your hat and become a puzzle master. So I'm, my job, if I've got a, a problem I'm faced and I'm locked and so on, the first thing I'm going to do is switch my role from the guy that has the problem to the guy that's going to get the problem solved. And my first task in doing that, or your first task, is to write down the problem in lay language. So, so somebody who doesn't understand your business, doesn't understand your background, would understand from the way you've written it down what it is you're trying to do. And you're also going to write down the rules, which is to say, here's what must be true, here's what must not be true, and the goal. So that's how you're going to take your first step of creating this into a puzzle mold. The next step is you're going to get some other people to help you. And these people should be people that, from a variety of different, it could be one person, it could be 10 people. But you want to come to, bring them in a room together and give them all paper. And ideally, they have at least some people that don't have this as a high stakes matter. So they're people that are not dependent on your financial success for their happiness, so that they can have more flexibility. Then you're going to ask them, each of them, let's say you're a round table, they're sitting around, and you're going to be up front, and now you're not the guy with the problem. You're the facilitator of this meeting. And as the facilitator, you're going to teach them, see, plan, do, check, and then you're going to lead them through it for your problem. So for example, uh, you've got your problem, you read it out to them, you ask everybody to write it in their own words, everybody to draw a picture, and you've got everybody up to speed and warmed up by doing that. Once you're done with that phase, ask everybody to take their paper and write down some ideas. And those ideas are not necessarily to solve the problem. Those are any ideas related to the problem. Bad ideas are strongly encouraged. After they write down the ideas, then as the facilitator, you just say, can I have your, one of your ideas? And just write it on your board. Can I have one of your ideas? Write it on your board. And collect these. Get a minimum of 20. 100 is better. Bad, if anybody tries to say that's a bad idea, try to celebrate the idea and give energy to say, we want the bad ideas. We want the ideas that break the rules because they're going to be springboards for other ideas. They're also going to be a, a good indication that people are not using judgment and freeing up their minds. And that's really what you want them to do. Now you're still a facilitator. You're going to ask your group of friends, OK, use your minds together. And I've got this long list. Now we're going to move into the do stage. And the first thing I'd like you to help me with is eliminating ideas that do break the rules or are impractical or ideas that are just not going to work. And at this point, you're not playing yourself. You're playing the facilitators. You're not throwing in your own ideas about what works or doesn't. You're getting it from the group. Then you're asking the group, OK, we've eliminated ideas. Now combine ideas. Are there any ideas on this page that belong together, that are just different facets of the same thing, and we need to combine them to work on them and think about them together. Then you can ask the group, what is the priority? Which one of these are the most important to, to do first? And now, for the first time, you're free to uh, put on your other hat for a moment. So you can now throw in your knowledge about what I've already tried, or et cetera. Because that, you, know, you might have unique knowledge, and I don't want to lose that just because you've got the other hat on. D explore the ideas, go deep, go deep, go deep, write down your conclusions, move the group to the next step, which is uh, check. So now you're going to compare what you've learned to what you were trying to do. See, plan, do, check. So what's happened here is you've gotten this group to be a bigger mind for you. And you've done an antidote to the problem of being locked into only one way of looking at the world. And that's really what we're trying to do with puzzle thinking. Uh, what happens is the first time you do it, you make amazing progress. The second time, you make more progress, and so on. It becomes the kind of thing that develops a skill. 
eventually you get to the point where you need less of the, of the um, stage. So you can do it with only one person or no people, but you're, be, you're, you're developing your flexibility muscle to be able to change viewpoints, see things from a different viewpoint. So it's the kind of thing that's like an exercise. You get better and better at it the more you do it. So I want to just, the, the main things that I want to leave you with or make sure you get for sure are it's very different to do this stuff versus thinking about doing this stuff. This is, it won't work unless you really write it, unless you really involve other people. Uh, I've, I've had people try to do this in their head and it doesn't work. I've had people reluctantly do it and be amazed at what happens. So I'm encouraging every one of you to actually take this into practice and do it. Write it, write it, write it. The most important thing you can hear today is get it out of your head by writing it down. The second most important thing is to involve others. The third most is to continue to do whatever you can to lower the stakes. Those are the keys to solving uh, many problems. And that's, and I, again, I've seen it again and again and again successfully over a long period of time. Thank you all.